Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mathematical Literacy Webinar for Grade 10s this morning. Uh, we will begin shortly. I would just like to allow a few more minutes time for all the learners to join the webinar. So please stay with me and be patient. We will begin in a minute or so. Okay, once again, good morning everyone to the Mathematical Literacy webinar. So uh, it looks like the majority of the learners are signed up and ready to go. So I think let's get started. Uh, my name is Kimberly Britz. I am the Educational Specialist for Mathematical Literacy. Now, before we begin uh, this webinar, let's just cover some of the basic. I trust most of you are already familiar with all of this, but please just be patient while we quickly read through the following points. So if you are struggling to hear me, make sure your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will, prob uh, you will automatically be muted when joining this session. Should you have any questions, you can ask your question in the question box below or on the right, or you can raise your hand. To raise your hand, click the icon on your dashboard below or on your right. Download this presentation and additional resources in the handout box below or on your right. You will also find all this information in the question box below or on your right. Remember to please send us your questions. Attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in the attendee being dismissed from the session. If we did not get to your question, please send an email to academics at impact.co.za. Questions in the question box will be answered and made available afterwards. If you did not receive the questions and answers, please send an email to info at impact.co.za and then visit the Impact YouTube channel for recordings of this session. Now, before we continue with today's topic of discussion, I would just like to um, indicate at this point that you should be done with term two work or you should be close to being finished with um, your term two work. So you will find if you need any additional assistance with any topic covered during term two, please go back, go look at the webinar sessions as well as the notes that were uploaded to guided learning. So you will find that there are webinars and there are additional notes and activities on all the topics that we dealt with during term two. So for today's discussion, we are going to have a look at the following points. First of all, I would like to look at the suggest uh, suggested work schedule for the term three work. I would like to have a look at our June and November examination regarding what to expect. So we're going to have a look at the overview of paper one, an overview of paper two, and then also the weightings per topic in these two papers. 
And then lastly, we are going to discuss some additional resources. So please stay with me. There's some valuable information that is going to be shared during this webinar, just to give you an idea of how to study and how to prepare for every exam paper. Um, and then as well, I, I am aware that this session is in English. So if you are Afrikaans learner, please go and have a look in the handout box. All the slides that we will be covering today, they are all made available in Afrikaans. So please download the Afrikaans webinar slides if you are an Afrikaans learner. Okay, so let us have a look at the term three suggested work schedule. Now, I would like to stress that this is a suggested work schedule. So, this is not a strict um, schedule that you have to adhere to. If you take a little bit longer to cover a topic or you cover a topic um, in a shorter time period than the suggested work schedule, it is all fine. This is just to give you a little bit of a framework um, to indicate more or less how much time you should be spending on each topic. So you will find that in term three, we are going to cover the context focusing on finances. Let me just get my spotlight on here. Okay. So we are going to be focusing on finances with subtopics of income, expenditure, profit loss, income and expenditure statements, as well as budgets. And you will see according to the suggested schedule, you are supposed to be spending more or less three weeks on the topic of finances. Then you will see the next topic that you're going to move to is going to focus on measurements, which is covering perimeter, area, and volume. Once again, you have about three weeks to cover this topic. Then the last topic that you will cover in term three is focusing on maps, plans, and other representations of the physical world, including models and plans. And once again, there is approximately three weeks for you to cover this topic. Now, I would suggest that you try and start with your term three week uh, to term three work as soon as possible um, during this uncertain time that we find ourselves in um, and during this time where we are unsure of how the terms are going to look for the remainder of the year. I would suggest that you start with term three work as soon as you are done with term two work just to, um, to avoid falling behind in the future when they, the Department of Education gives us a little bit more clarity of what to expect for the year ahead. So that is my advice to you. You will also see that the following webinar that we are going to do, we are going to cover a June examination paper. So we are going to collaboratively work through one of those, where after we are going to start our webinars with term three work. So I will also shortly start webinars on this content. Now, before we continue, the assessments that you will be doing in this term or for term three is going to be an assignment which counts 50 marks as well as a control test or better known as a term test, also counting 15, 50 marks. If you wish to have additional information or detailed information regarding your assignment and control test, please refer to the assessment planner or the AP on myimpact.co.za. So most of you should be familiar with your assessment planner. You will find that the assessments for the entire year is um, described in detail on your assessment planner. So please refer to that if you wish to have more information on these two assessments. All right, so now let's have a look at our June and November examination. So you will see that the structure is quite similar for both examinations. Now, paper one is going to cover the following topics finance, measurement, maps, plans, and other representations, as well as data handling. The information that you can see here is on your November examination. So just double check on your assessment planner for the information uh, with regard to your June examination. So first of all, your November examination will count out of 75 marks, paper one, and you will have an hour and a half to complete paper one. Now, paper one is your basic skills paper. 
So what I mean by that is it is going to be a level one, level two and level three paper. Now I am going to discuss these levels in a little bit more detail in the following slide. So just bear with me, uh, your basic skills. What I mean by that, it will become clear in a short while. Now, first of all, this paper will consist out of five questions. First of all, a question on finances, a question on measurement, a question on maps, plans, and other representations, as well as a question on data handling. And then your fifth question will be an integration of all the topics covered throughout the year or covered then in your June examination in term one and term two. So you will see that these four topics will be integrated and asked in question five. Then please, um, be aware that each question can contain more than one context. Now, what I mean by that is when we work with question one, which is, for example, on finances, you might come across a question that deals on measurements in the finance question. So finances in question one will be the, the majority of the questions will deal on finances, but you might come across questions um, that come from other topics that are integrated with finances. And then you will also be be, um, be tested on your interpretation and communicating answers and calculations, as well as numbers and operations with numbers and patterns, relationships and other representations. So these are your basic mathematical skills. There is not a weighting to this um, and it is integrated in all the topics. So you will find that this work is covered in all four to five questions. And then lastly, you will see that there is not a question that is only on probability as probability will be assessed, but it will be integrated in the context of another um, rather uh, in another question rather than acting as a question on its own. So probability will form part of one of your five questions, but it will not be a question by itself. Okay, so we've previously spoke about your basic skills paper. Now, what I mean by that is your paper will consist out of level one, level two, and level three cognitive levels. So you will find that level one, which is your knowing level, is going to be 60% with um, an adaption of plus minus 5%. So it's not necessarily going to be 60%, but it's going to be more or less 60%. Then level two, applying routine procedures in familiar context. Your paper will consist out of 35% of level two questions. And then level three, applying multi-step procedures in a variety of contexts. So only 5% of paper one will deal with level three questions. Now, Let's quickly have a look at what I mean by these levels. So you will find that in your previous grades, some of these levels were explained in your study guide and in your facilitator guide. But if you are not yet familiar, let's quickly have a look at those. So in paper one, we are only dealing with level one, level two and level three cognitive levels. Now, level one would refer to questions where you use mathematical facts and vocabulary where you're going to predict answers and round off of values, as well as theoretical knowledge. So this is your simple, um, simple, straightforward questions. Um, just to give you an example of a level one question, that this can be to read information directly off uh, electricity or off a financial bill. So pretty straightforward. If they ask you to, um, search for uh, to determine what the date is that the financial bill was um, was sent out. It is quite straightforward, therefore a level one question. Then if we look at level two, now level two is where you are going to complete known procedures, where you are going to apply skills with more than one step draw calculations or conclusions from given information, and then also make use of basic calculations learned from examples or exercises. So this is your familiar straightforward um, questions and the questions that are extremely similar to your activities and similar to the examples done in your study guide.
Now, a level two example would be to determine a value before VAT was added. So it's a quite, it's a small calculation. It is a straightforward calculation and you do not need to apply multiple skills. It is only one skill that is being tested. Now, let's have a look at level three. Now, level three remembers only 5% of paper one. So this is going to deal on your complex calculations and high order arguments. So no stipulated path to follow, and you will need to do conceptual and holistic approaches to the problems in order to solve them. So just a, an idea of what a level three question might look like. It can be to draw a graph to illustrate the income and expenses of a business. So you will find that you are going to make use of many skills in order to solve these problems and that you will need to keep the bigger picture in mind when answering these problems or when solving them rather. Right, so by show of hands, who of you are still with me? Who of you um, understand a little bit better now what is expected in paper one? You can put up your hands just to show that you are all listening in. Thank you very much. I see many hands. I know it's extremely early in the morning and it's quite a cold winter's morning, so I'm so pleased to see that many of you are joining in this morning. Great, thank you so much. All right, so let's quickly continue. Now let's have a look at paper two. Now paper two, you will see the questions or the topics covered in this paper, they are exactly the same. So you are still going to be doing a question on finances, a question on measurements, a question on maps, plans, and other representations, as well as a question on data handling. Once again, this information is on your November examination. So the total will be 75 and you will have a duration or a time of one and a half hours to complete the paper. Now, this paper is better known as your application paper or your mul and it, it and it is known as your application paper because you are going to make use of multi-step procedures to answer the majority of the questions in this task. Your uh, task or paper will consist out of four to five questions and it works exactly the same as your previous question. So one question on finances, one on measurements, one on maps, plans and other representations and one on data handling. And then as it says here in the, by the, uh, the, the fourth point, probability will also be assessed, but it will be integrated in one of those questions. If there were to be a, a fifth question in this paper, then it will once again be an integration of all the, to all the topics covered in term one or two or throughout the year for a November examination. You will find that each, each question can contain more than one context, exactly the same as paper one. And then once again, you will be assessed on your basic skills. Now, just to quickly point out these uh, contexts, these uh, basic mathematical skills that we refer to is skills that um, referring to rounding off to estimation to making comparisons to analyzing and to drawing graphs so it is simple straightforward mathematical skills that you should already be able to do start of grade 10. now let's have a look at the levels that we are going to cover in paper two this paper is going to be a level two, three, and four paper. So your cognitive levels will be these three, and you will find that 25% of the paper is going to be on level two questions, 35% will be on level three questions, and then level, um, level four will be 40% of the questions in the paper. So you will find that this paper is going to make um, include a lot more of your higher order reasoning and reflecting. Therefore, paper one is generally known as your easier paper, and paper two is a slight bit more difficult, more interpretation, more analyzing. So um, just be aware of that so that you can study accordingly. 
Now, once again, let's quickly cover the levels. Once again, level two remains the same, complete known procedures, um, familiar questions, similar to examples and exercises. Your level three questions will be complex calculations with no stipulated path where you need to make use of holistic approaches towards the problems. And then level four, which we did not cover in the previous slide. Now, level four can be on unseen and not routine problems. So higher order thinking. Now, what they mean by unseen by unseen, it can be work, uh, especially in a November examination, we can um, incorporate work that you might not have dealt with um, a lot in your study guide so you will find that you will need to incorporate every single skill to your availability and all your skills um, regarding all the topics you will need to incorporate all of that in order to solve a level four problem now just to give you an example of a level four it can be to choose a strategy to compare the cost of two electricity systems in order to determine which system is the most cost effective so so you will need to decide, are you going to make use of a graph? Are you going to make use of a table? How are you going to compare the two systems in order to make a, or to draw a conclusion as to what system will be the most cost effective? So once again, higher order thinking, multiple steps that you will need to make use of in order to solve these problems. Now let's quickly lastly have a look on your on the weighting. Now as I mentioned all your paper paper one as well as paper two will include basic skill topics. As I explained this is rounding off estimation making comparisons analyzing drawing graphs so uh, basic mathematical skills. Now you will see that there is no weighting provided for these topics as it will be integrated throughout the, um, the application of the topics. Now you will find here your application topics the topics that you will cover throughout the year is your finance measurement maps plans and other representations data handling and probability. So if we look at our papers separately paper one will include 35 percent on finances. Your um, next topic will be on measurement and 20% of the paper will cover measurement. 15% will cover maps, plans and other representations. 25% will be on data handling and then a minimum of 5% will be on probability. So this weighting is true for paper one as well as paper two. And this is just to guide you um, into a direction of what uh, topic the majority of the question will be on. So you will see the majority is going to be on finances after that data handling, after that measurement. And then the topic um, that is the second least covered in a, in a paper is maps, plans and other representations. And then probability, which is a minimum of 5%. And not a question by itself, it will be integrated. So it is going to be the, the topic which is covered the least in both papers. Now, I trust that this information really helped you um, to uh, be, be a little bit more aware of what you're going to uh, expect in paper one and two, as well as how to study and prepare for these papers. If you want to make use of additional resources, please go to our guided learning platform. There are um, tutors available. So if you come across a question where you don't understand something or you need additional assistance, please just go onto our tutor me platform um, or so, sorry, our solve by chat platform and one of our tutors will com come back to you to assist you with those questions. And if you have any other questions when you're working through past papers, through your study guide, through additional resources, and you come across something where you are where you need some assistance, please send an email to academics at impact.co.za so that we can assist you um, as far as we possibly can. So good luck for those of you who are still finishing up with term two work. I encourage you to, to try and finish up if you are not yet done as soon as possible so that all of us can start our term three work collaboratively within the next few weeks. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions left, 
please remember to submit them in the question box so that I can get back to you on those via email. Please also remember to download today's slide. It is available in the handout box in both English and Afrikaans. Thank you very much.